Thank you, Excellency Ambassador Vasiliev. Um, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great honor to be here, and I'm very much excited to have a chance to talk to you about uh, some uh, experience we got uh, in Arctic. And the purpose of my presentation is to describe the view on uh, how to build up an effective transportation solution for medium and large scale oil and gas project in the Arctic uh, based on the practical experience we got uh, in Sovcom Flood Group, which is the uh, largest tanker company with the biggest uh, ice transient and ice breaking fleet uh, in the world. Right, this is the one. Um, out of total fleet of 149 tankers owned by Sovcom Flood, with a total dead weight of more than 13 million tons of uh, million tons. 76 ships uh, have an ice class uh, enabling, enabling year around work as in the Baltic Sea and in the most severe Arctic and subarctic projects. More than 3,500 Sokom Flot seafarers out of 8,000 are specially trained to work in Arctic and subarctic navigation and climatic conditions. The ice-breaking tankers, which we use for transportation in Arctic and subarctic areas, designed and built in close cooperation uh, with the operators of particular projects, taking into account the unique characteristics of each of the shipping terminals and sea area around. 18 vessels use the double-acting tanker technology, which has been invented by uh, Finns uh, some time ago. And, um, Ship, 14 ships are equipped with uh, dynamic positioning systems. Uh, there are various type of vessels which are equipped with, with ice class, and this is uh, LNG and LPG gas carriers, uh, crude oil and petroleum product tankers, special purpose vessels for servicing uh, offshore oil and gas uh, production platforms. Um, Actually, the active uh, practical phase of development of large-scale uh, large capacity vessels navigation on the Northern Sea Route, we started in 2010 in cooperation with company Rosadam Flot, operating nuclear icebreakers in, in, in the Russian Arctic. As a result of pilot transit uh, voyages we managed to, to perform, we proved uh, the commercial efficiency of, of the alternative to Suez Canal transportation of hydrocarbons. We discovered and established the deep sea route uh, north of Novosibirsk Islands, allowing to increase the size of the vessels using the northern sea route, and determined the special features and tactic of the ice navigation for the super ships, which have been taken into account for design and construction of ships for Newport project and Yamal LNG project, both located in Op River estuary. Uh, by providing 100% export uh, of crude oil and 25% uh, of gas seaborne transportation from Sakhalin Island, our seafarers accumulate unique practice and skills for uh, further work in the Arctic, bearing in mind that the ice conditions in the Sea of Okhotsk are quite similar to Arctic conditions. Ice sickness reach 1.2 meters, and the winter temperature get down to about 32 degrees centigrade. The first shipment of LNG uh, from Sakhalin 2 we performed in 2009 by our uh, ice breaking, ice transit uh, LNG carrier, uh, Grand Aniva. Since the beginning of our operation in Barin Sea uh, for Varanday project in 2008, uh, three of our tankers, uh, which have been equipped and specially designed for particular navigation conditions, have safely and effectively transported more than 55 million tons of oil as of today. Um, Sovcom Lord Tank is servicing the Varande project and Prirazlomne project uh, in the same location uh, in uh, Baren Sea. Year-round uh, worked without any icebreakers assistance and support. Um, this year, we, th this is a photo picture of uh, uh, Prirazlomne project and Prirazlomne rig. And this year, we actually shipped from, from that rig the fifth million tons of, of oil already. Since autumn last year, for the first time in the history of maritime navigation, the large shipment of oil from the shallow 
Hope River estuary have become possible on the year-round basis. Uh, this terminal allocated in the Op River estuary in very shallow area, uh, and the terminal allocated three and five kilometers uh, out of uh, off, 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 offshore. Uh, and uh, the area is very shallow. That's why we had to design uh, shallow draft tankers with 9.5 uh, uh, meters draft. Uh, but those tankers, they are equipped with uh, ARC-7 ice class, uh, and the bottom of these tankers is equipped in, the, in accordance with ARC-8 standards. That's why this is very, quite, quite, quite strong tankers. They can walk in uh, conditions of the temperature minus, down to minus 45, and they capable to break ice uh, of the sickness about 1.8 meters. Um, they do it better by stone, but by, by going ahead, they, they break the ice uh, about 1.2 meters. And this uh, tanker, Sturman Albanov, this is the first of this, of this series. Um, it was the first tanker which has got a certificate of compliance to the Polar Court uh, from, from Russian Maritime Register. And uh, this year, this tanker has got an award from Maritime Propulsion, 2017 Maritime Propulsion Award. Uh, being the, the best, best tanker of the year. And uh, uh, we really call this tanker as, as, as a seventh wonder. Uh, this is the first tanker uh, LNG carrier in the world, uh, which have been built for uh, year-round uh, navigation in Arctic. And this tanker can uh, uh, go through the ice 2.1 meter, uh, going a stone, uh, and 1.8 meter going, going ahead. Uh, in March 2017, we safely uh, and successfully completed the ice test of, of this tanker. And the biggest problem of this ice trial was to find the proper sickness ice to, to test the ship uh, in a proper way. Uh, in, uh, at, the, at the end of March, uh, we performed the trial uh, call to, to, to the port of Sabeta, and hopefully by the end of, May, uh, end of November this year, or maybe beginning of December, we may perform the first shipment of LNG from, from Port of Sabetta uh, to, to uh, Southeast Asia, or whatever destination is. Um, the vessel uh, is built in compliance with, uh, with the standards of ARC-7 ICE class and uh, has a capacity of 172,000 cubic meters. Um, and of course, those experiments we got through uh, utilization of tankers for different projects, we uh, use for designing and building this tanker. Uh, for sure, actually, this tanker, uh, to this tanker, the blue ribbon of uh, Arctic belongs. And um, on uh, 29th of uh, July this year, the vessel uh, loaded the parcel of uh, LNG in the uh, port of Hammerfest in Norway for the uh, port of Baryong. Uh, in, in Korea, it was a, the parcel of about 76,000 tons of LNG. The vessel actually passed uh, the northern sea route within six days and 12 hours, with the average, space, uh, average speed of 14 knots. Uh, and uh, the, the whole transit time from uh, Hammerfest to Baryong took just 19 days. Um, and the vessel actually performed this voyage without any assistance of icebreaker. And uh, uh, as far as I know, the New York Times uh, magazine uh, wrote quite, quite a substantial article about it, which we're actually very much proud about. For sure, the next tankers which will be built for the same project, they may get this ribbon uh, uh, making this, this voyage faster. But uh, the, 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 first, uh, the first ribbon actually belongs to this Tanker, which we call Christophe de Mergerie. I would like to, to, to mention a couple of words uh, about our new initiative, uh, which uh, we launched this year. Um, and this initiative is the transfer of Aframax big tankers, like 115,000 tons tankers, uh, on uh, to LNG fuel. And uh, 
next year, at the, at the middle of it, next year, we will get the first tanker uh, fueled by LNG. And uh, we think this is, this is a great future for, for, for the maritime transportation. Because of uh, those tankers or those vessels which use LNG as a fuel, they reduce atmospheric emission uh, quite drastically. So the carbon dioxide reduced by 15%, nitrogen, oxygen uh, reduced by 80%, and sulfur oxygen reduced by 90%, which actually uh, quite exceeding all of those limits which have been imposed by IMO uh, uh, in Maritime Convention uh, since uh, 2020. Uh, we ordered eight, uh, sorry, we, we ordered six tankers like this, and uh, we hope to, to get them in 2018, 2019, and the series of the same tankers, uh, we, we will continue building these tankers in Russia, uh, and uh, with uh, delivery in, since 2021, 2022, 2023. And the final part of my, my presentation today is about people, about manpower. We all know that 80% of casualties at sea, uh, especially when it comes to Arctic and harsh environment and ice, happen because of uh, human factor. That's why we spend a lot of energy, money, uh, time. Uh, we train our, our crew. Uh, we built special uh, training center in St. Petersburg. And, uh, as a matter of fact, our League of Ice Captains, uh, which we established in 2008, 2010, consists of 70 captains already. Thank you very much, uh, and uh, would be happy to answer any questions uh, if you have some. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Ambrose. We really have very, very short time, but I would, I would be tempted to ask one question to you. You have been with the Arctic Economic Council since the very beginning, and you are still there with, with it and hope you will be for a, long, for a long time. What would be your assessment of how things stand now in the Council and what is your feeling on what its future will be? Thank you, Excellency. Um, Actually, I've been elected for the first time in the uh, Arctic Economic Council in uh, 2014, and I'm still there. I'm a deputy to the chairman. Uh, uh, I'm not sure whether Tero Arasta is here, or he's on board of his uh, uh, nicely built and equipped vessel, uh, Nordica, staying alongside here. Uh, actually, we, we, we developed uh, quite substantially uh, the Arctic Economic Council, and uh, uh, we uh, uh, attracted attention of a lot of uh, uh, people from Asia and non-Arctic countries to join us uh, as non-voting members. And uh, we would like to build, uh, to make Arctic safe area for, for developing business uh, for those people who live there and for those people who support those people. Uh, living, living in Arctic, and for those who wants to develop business, uh, who wants to uh, 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 produce oil, gas, uh, ma make Arctic comfortable place place for living. Uh, tomorrow, actually, we have a strategic meeting here uh, in Reykjavik, taking the opportunity that we can all come here. So we have a strategic meeting tomorrow. Uh, we have a lot of discussion uh, how to move further how to attract more people, how to attract attention of uh, government uh, organization, non-government organization, business uh, 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 companies uh, and uh, councils, whatever. Uh, and hopefully we, we, can, uh, we can develop it further quite successfully. Thank you. Thank you very much. We have run out of time and uh, uh, if there will be any questions, so I think Mr. Ambrose will be happy to answer them in the cool hours on the margins of the conference. But here I would like to thank you very much for your attention. Thank you for a fantastic contribution. I wish you all the best in all your endeavors.